In case you have been up to date, this video is not an episode on the ongoing proof series, but is actually the start of an entirely new series on calculus, and as time goes on, hopefully more and more series begin to emerge. That being said, just what the heck is calculus, and what is all the fuss about? The first place I'd like to start is that calculus, at least at the level I intend to show you, is not very complex at all. The places where people begin to fumble with calculus is by not proving statements or exploring ideas and formulas for yourself, <clears throat> go explore my proof series, and then they eventually become overrun with all these new ideas and they don't even have a grasp on the old ideas and they're not getting a proper grasp on that. No. And the other thing is that people often don't have a solid grasp on the pre-calculus ideas, such as what a function is and how logarithms work. These ideas build up and they only prevent you from getting into calculus. The first issue can actually be addressed by watching my series on basic proof techniques, as I said, and hopefully you can review enough to not stumble your algebra or function notation. That's a lot of talking about what people have a hard time with in calculus without actually considering the course material, and that's because calculus really is that easy. Well, for now at least, but let's ignore the future. Basic calculus is taking the concepts of high school algebra and applying a limit to it. Being able to state with confidence what happens when you get infinitely close to a point. The limit, often the first concept taught in calculus classes, is best thought of geometrically. Take this curve for instance. We don't know what the function that produces this curve is, but we can still understand what a limit is. All I'm doing is just seeing what happens as I get closer and closer to this point. This isn't some kind of trickery. The limit, as far as you'll be concerned, really is this simple. With this visual idea in mind, it shouldn't be too much to examine limits algebraically and in terms of function notation. Let's look at some examples, shall we? This curve, it's a line, but most functions are curvy, so we'll just call this one a curve too is defined by the function f of x equals 5x. When we examine the graph, as we take the limit as x approaches 0, written as such, so x getting closer and closer to 0, we can see that this function gets closer and closer to 0 as well. Zooming in on that x-axis as we get close to 0 shows that the y value is getting closer and closer to 0. Alternatively, with algebra, we can simply substitute 0 in for x and call it a day. If limits are so simple, then what's all the fuss? Let's look at a different function. f of x equals on top x squared plus 3x plus 2 and divided by x plus 1. We're going to first examine the graph of this function and notice that it produces a continuous straight line with no interruptions using our software. A red flag should emerge though when we look at what happens when x equals minus 1. Algebraically, putting x equals minus 1 so the function means we have to divide by 0, because minus 1 plus 1 is 0, but that's totally unacceptable. But notice what happens on the numerator at x equals minus 1. It also equals 0. So we don't have just any number divided by 0, we have 0 divided by 0. The ultimate math battle of anything multiplied by 0 is just 0, and anything divided by 0 is nonsense. Of course, 0 divided by 0 is still nonsense, but how you approach that 0 divided by 0 makes all the difference, and we know the exact function that gets us to our 0 divided by 0 scenario. When you factor the numerator, and then cancel it out with the denominator as shown, you end up with a straight line, one that has no problem being evaluated at x equals minus 1 and gives us a value consistent with our previous graph too. This ingenious maneuver of cancelling out like terms is what gives rise to calculus through a definition of the limit. We didn't have to divide by zero because we were able to cancel out the scenario that gave us the zero divided by zero. Rules for the limit, as well as principles of instantaneous rate of change, will be reserved for next episode, but for now, I want to make sure that you know what a function is and you are fully comfortable with using algebra to manipulate variables and functions. 
A function takes an input, does a process to that input, and gives an output. So if I said f of x equals x squared, then f of 3 will square 3 and return 9 as a value. So we'll say f of 3 equals 9. Alternatively, if I asked for f of banana, and although banana isn't a number, so squaring it is kind of nonsensical, we can still pretend that nothing is wrong by simply replacing x with banana to reveal f of banana equals banana squared. And if we tried to find f of x plus y, we'd get x plus y squared. Having a full understanding of functions is crucial. Lastly, as a refresher on some algebra, variables work exactly as numbers do, since, you know, they are real numbers. So when I give a sum or product of functions, look at it as exactly the task of adding number-like structures and multiplying number-like structures. This can be confusing at first, but the more you pay attention to using variables, the more you will see this. Alternatively, if I ever do a math fundamentals or a beyond high school algebra series, this will make perfect sense. A good understanding of how logarithms work and what the trigonometric or the more appropriately named circular functions like sine and cosine work by starting with their definitions and proving their rules really helps as well. I can't stress this enough. Take the definition of a logarithm, figure out where the rules come from. It will make a thousand times more sense. I'm not sure what the content of the next episode will be whether or not it'll be a different series i'll continue the proof series or i'll make another episode of this but this is for certain the next video in this calculus series will teach you all about limits and rates of change until next time keep on learning